Honda, one of the most iconic names in automobile and racing history, have finally achieved their goal of winning a Formula One World Championship, with Max Verstappen of Red Bull racing in their final year in F1, ending a 30-year wait when Ayrton Senna last won it with a Honda-powered McLaren in 1991. History of Honda in F1 Honda started their F1 adventure in the year 1964 and were set to debut in the Mexican Grand Prix, but the Honda RA217 was not ready in time to take part in that race. Finally, Honda debuted as a constructor in the German Grand Prix, with Ronnie Buckman as their driver, who finished 13th in the first ever race for Honda. Honda continued for four more years in F1 before withdrawing from the sport after Joe Schlesser's crash in the French GP, where he slid wide at the Six Ferreras corner and crashed sideways into a bank and the car burst into flames, resulting in the death of the driver. Honda might have withdrawn from the sport, but the aim with which they entered Formula One was not fulfilled. The aim of winning a world championship, both drivers and constructors, and with that aim in mind, Honda entered the Formula One scene again as an engine supplier in 1983 for Spirit Racing. They could not achieve anything great with Spirit Racing and then started supplying engines to Williams Racing from 1984, season in which Honda achieved their first race win with Kiki Rosberg driving the Honda-powered Williams car to victory in the Dallas Grand Prix. Honda kept on improving and finished third in the Constructors' Championship, but the aim was not fulfilled yet. In 1986, Honda made incredible changes to their engine, and the RA166E V6 turbo engine was a force to be reckoned with. The Honda-powered Williams was one of the most dominant cars in the 1986 season, with Williams winning the Constructors' Championship handing Honda their first ever, and Nigel Mansell losing out on the Drivers' Championship by only two points. This marked the start of the golden era for Honda. After the 1986 success, Lotus saw this as a great opportunity and signed with Honda to become their engine supplier. In the 1987 season, Williams Honda again won the Constructors' Championship, and a Honda-powered Lotus finished third in the Constructors' Championship, but the Drivers' Championship was again too far for Honda's liking. With the aim of winning the Drivers' Championship, Honda moved on, and a deal was signed between the dominant McLaren and Honda in 1988, and with the end of the 1988 season, Honda's long wait for a Drivers' Championship was finally over, with McLaren's Ayrton Senna winning his first ever world championship, and the Constructors' Trophy, with McLaren, was just the cherry on top. McLaren Honda again bagged a double in the 1989, 1990 and the 1991 season as well. Honda won the Constructors' Trophy in 1992 as well, but could not bag the Drivers' Championship and then left the sport for a while. Honda's forgetful second return to F1. Honda returned as an engine supplier in 2000 for BAR team and also provided engines to Jordan till 2002. Then they decided to focus on supplying engines to BAR only until 2005 before acquiring the team in 2006 and returning as a constructor. The spell was nothing spectacular and Honda had to quit the sport due to the global economic crisis in 2008, again when the team was sold and acquired by Braun GP. The latest Honda adventure after the disappointing spell from 2000 to 2008, Honda could not just leave F1 on such a low and announced in 2013 they would be returning to F1 as engine suppliers for McLaren, with the aim of recreating the golden era of 1987 to 1992. But the 2015 to 2017 seasons were anything but. The 2015 season, highlighted by the infamous Fernando Alonso radio message in Suzuka saying GP2 engine GP2 engine, ah, was a miserable year for the team, as the RA615H engine was very slow and unreliable compared to all other teams, leaving them ninth in the Constructors' Championship. The 2016 season was a major improvement for the team, with the RA616H engine being far better than its predecessor, but again, in 2017, the Honda engine was again slow and unreliable as it was in 2015, and hence McLaren decided to change their engine supplier from Honda to Renault. 
What went wrong with McLaren and Honda? As per F1 journalist Dieter Renken, Honda's return to F1 in 2015 went bad because they thought that preparing engines was easy. Renken, in a podcast in 2015, revealed that he had asked Masadi Yamamoto about the reason of their failure to provide a good engine. This is what he said. When I spoke to Yamamoto-san, Masashi Yamamoto, the managing director of Honda F1, I said to him there, what was the reason? And he said, we thought it would be easy. A second chance. Despite the failures, Honda were not ready to give up on their aim to win the championships just yet, and hence announced the signing of a new deal with Toro Rosso to become their engine suppliers from 2018, and they improved slowly, learning from the mistakes they made with McLaren, with the aim to return to the top again. The 2018 season with Toro Rosso, now Alfa Tori, was reasonably good. Although Toro Rosso only finished ninth in the constructors, the final few races showed a clear sign of improvement and impressed by those improvements. Red Bull also decided to make Honda their engine suppliers, with the aim of competing with Mercedes and winning the Drivers' or Constructors' Championship again, a goal which both Honda and Red Bull had in common. Together, Honda and Red Bull enjoyed three very successful years, with Red Bull finishing third in the Constructors in 2019 and second in both 2020 and 2021, and ending their long wait for a driver's championship after 20 years of Ayrton Senna winning it in 1991 as Max Verstappen won his first ever driver's championship in Honda's last race before they leave F1 again to focus its resources on the development of electric road car technology. Honda CEO Toshihiro Mibe congratulated Max on winning the championship and said congratulations to Max on his first world championship title and to Red Bull Racing, our partner since 2019. I watched the race at HRD Secura and was very impressed by Max and the team who never stopped challenging for the world championship title until the end. He further added he wanted to thank Alpha for Tory, with whom our association with Red Bull began, as well as our suppliers and all our fans who have always supported us. For Honda, this title is the goal we set ourselves ever since we returned to F1 in 2015, and today we have written a new chapter in Honda's history. I'd like to thank all the Honda employees who've made it possible. Honda Managing Director Masashi Yamamoto also gave the credit of their victory to the two seasons with McLaren from 2015 to 2017, where they learnt what they did wrong and improved upon their mistakes to make an engine worthy of challenging for the championship and ultimately winning. All the fundamental basis we have now that allows us to fight for the championship was built up in the McLaren days. So we achieved a lot of things there. Yamamoto said. It was just a shame that we respected each other too much and it meant it didn't really work well because we respected them and they respected us. But it didn't quite click. But we learned many things and that learning has accelerated our development in this Red Bull era. 2017 in Bahrain was the toughest moment for us in Honda. Many MGU-H failures made it tough. We learned that the MGU-H technology is really hard and difficult. We learned a lot about it during the McLaren days, which can seem as a positive, as we've got something out of it. It was tough, but we learned many things. My best memory was 2017 and the Spanish Grand Prix qualifying. I got goosebumps. It was when we got our first Q3 result that year, seventh place. It was a great performance from Fernando, explained Yamamoto. So this was the story of Honda in F1, how they went from being one of the best engine suppliers to being called GP2 engine suppliers, but learning from those mistakes and rising to the top again. Honda is a name which has contributed a lot to Formula One and will go down as one of the greatest names in the history of racing. Honda have bowed out on a high after finally winning the Formula One World Drivers' Championship. But can we say this is the last time we see the name Honda associated with F1? I don't think so. The Japanese never lose the hunger to win, and I think they will be back again in a few years' time with the aim to do it all again, with the aim to become champions again. What do you think? Will Honda leave F1 for good, or will they be back again in a few years? How will this affect Red Bull's 2022 season as they use Honda's technology to build their new engines? Do let us know in the comments.